There's not enough resources to deal with this. The Biden administration is used to dealing with major consequential topics like the debt ceiling, the pandemic, high inflation, and then there is the issue of the southern border. That issue is expected to come to a head later this week after Title 42 ends on May 11th. You see, before the pandemic, many asylum seekers would be allowed to stay in the U.S. while their asylum claims work through the court system. Title 42 allowed the U.S. to immediately turn most away. Since 2020, Title 42 has been used 2.7 million times to expel migrants. Many migrants were expelled under Title 42 more than once. With the policy soon to be over, some Texas cities like El Paso, Laredo, and Brownsville have already declared a state of emergency. Already, migrants are sleeping on streets in El Paso. Many government facilities, which often look like this, have reached capacity. 10,000 or more migrants a day are expected to try and enter the U.S. once Title 42 expires. In anticipation of the spike, President Biden ordered new migrant processing facilities to open in Central America in an attempt to stop migrants from even attempting to cross into Mexico. 1,500 troops have been sent to the border to assist border agents with administrative tasks so more agents can be on patrol. Mexico, meanwhile, agreed last week to accept more migrants expelled from the U.S., giving the White House more flexibility to deport after Title 42. This is challenging. We know that we anticipate more people at the border. There's not enough resources to deal with this. On Capitol Hill, the week begins with lawmakers on both sides pondering at least the possibility that the end of Title 42 could result in meaningful immigration reform. The House could vote on a bill this week, which would serve as the starting point for negotiations. It is true, Title 42 is a moment. Maybe this is the, the opportunity. It's worth noting you don't have to live along the border to feel the impact. States like Arizona and Texas continue to bus migrants to other parts of the country. In Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis' budget includes 12 million to relocate migrants who come to his state. In Denver, city leaders are spending around 800,000 a week on migrant services. And in New York, Mayor Eric Adams projects the city will be caring for 70,000 migrants by next year costing billions. This is an ongoing crisis. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington.